Good morning, everybody. Well, today is the 6th of September and it's about, it's that, it's 12 minutes past 9 a.m. and I am heading off on my drive. I know where I'm going. I won't, I won't do any filming in Coffs. I'll do that another day, but when I'm getting close to where I'm going, I will pull over and I'll start recording some of the air into where I'm going. Because where I'm going, it takes an hour to get there. And today I have got Garfield, of course, and we've got Cece, and I have got Little Blossom, and I have got Poppy. I'll get Poppy to show you Poppy. Come here, little. I'll put her in the back. This is Little Pop. For those who haven't seen Poppy, this is Little Poppy. Sorry, we've got a beautiful sunny day. I just held her here. This is Poppy. She is Ruby's first kit, kiss kit. So I've got her and, of course, you know, little Blossom, she's asleep. So I'll leave her there and I'll see you when I get to where I'm going. See you on the other side. Well, I'm back. Now, I turn yours on because, wait a minute, wait a minute, turn that off. I'm heading into a little town called Bellingen. I am on the Waterfall Way. Um, as I said earlier, it's such a beautiful day. Here's not even a cloud in the sky. Um, first town is Bellingen, which is about 10 k's away, which is maybe five minutes. Um, then I won't tell you where we're going up that until I get, get to there. So the first time I was over this way was in 2008, just after, not long after I moved to Coffs. Um, I was bleeding. I know it wasn't normal. Um, I went to my doctor. He says probably nothing, but he had, he sent me through an ultrasound. Um, internal um, ultrasound. Then he also gave me a a referral to go see. Wait a minute, that's better. I was in second year. Referral to go see a gynecologist. Okay, I thought I made an appointment to see the gynecologist. I wanted to go and see some. I don't know what some instinct told me. Yet yeah, go see the gynecologist because the bleeding was not normal. Um, I went for the ultrasound. That showed everything was okay, but it didn't show anything. It only showed that the bleed. So when I went to the gyno, um, he said that, okay, he won't have a look what he'll do. He'll send me out over to where I'm heading after um, to do, have a look and also do a, a, a curette. And for your females, you all know what a curette is. They go in and they scrape out they scrape out the lining of your uterus to clean it out and of course my periods haven't been regular before then they were on and off probably heading into menopause so that was on the 13th of October I remember the date I had the operation it was the 13th of October 2008 there was an operation just a procedure um, and that's why I went to where I'm actually heading not this first town, the second town we're heading to is where I went. When I get closer, I'll tell you the more of the results and everything of that operation, this procedure. But as I said, we are heading into first little town I said was Bellingen. This is a nice little country town. It's a beautiful day here. It's supposed to reach 32, but so far it's only 21 degrees Celsius. Remember, we are a metric here in Australia, and that is 21 degrees Celsius. I have no idea what that is in your part of the world. Oh, we have got roadworks up ahead. Now here we have a lot of, I think it's um, dairy farm. We've got cows, and we've got roadworks. Bummer. I'll turn you around that way. Um, no, this would be a nice place to live, but it's a bit far out of Coffs Harbour. Um, and because I don't have a vehicle. And also, it gets a bit nippy here. But not as nippy as to where we're going to eventually end up. But I might... What are we? It is... That clock's wrong. It is 5 to 10 a.m. Um, so, I'm not going to do... It won't take me long to get to where I'm going. I might see how far I go. I might go somewhere else. 
I've got all day today. I brought my little um, thumb drive and that if the video gets too big, I can transfer that onto the thumb drive. Um, Roadworks. I don't know what they're doing. Lucky I'm not in a hurry. Lucky I'm not going to an appointment. It's it beautiful. Look at that blue sky. Have you ever seen such blue sky? You know? As I said, there's, I cannot see a cloud at all in the sky. It is completely clear. So we've got no rain coming. Um, clover. We have got clover in the field. I remember as a child, we were kids, we had clover. We would go sit down the grass and the clover and we would make a clover chain. We pull the clover out, pull a little hole in the stem and slip the clover through. And I don't know why I'm doing hand signals because you cannot see what I'm doing here. Um, I might stop this now and start up when we get to, yeah, till, till we get moving. I don't know how long I'm going to go. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, we're off and running again. That wasn't long, was it? Only a couple of minutes. There was a lot of traffic. Um, it's some moo We've got some moo cows here. Do you see the moo cows? Wait a minute. They're just in there. There's a lovely lady, what we call the lollipop lady. Um, you didn't see, you just see the cow cows. What are they doing? We can see what, they got the big arm digger, what I call, I don't know what the machinery is called, but I call it a long arm digger. They dig it on the side of the road here, doing some men at work. Yeah, look at these two guys walking down the road, very busy, you know. I had an uncle who used to work on the Gold Coast in Queensland on the roadworks, main roads, and when I was delivering parcels back 30 odd years ago, I would see him sitting on his ass under an umbrella with the light control. That was his job all day, sitting on his ass. I suppose out here, when you've got these men working on the roads, oh, we've got more, more roadworks. Looks like we could get them on the way back as well. As I said, I haven't been over here for a long time. Oh, one, no wonder it's long road. They got, and there's no other way. Oh, there may be, there is another way in or out of here. So I'm going to get this on the way back. But you know what? That's okay. It's Friday. If I miss Bowl and the Beautiful, I can watch it another day. That's okay. I'm in a very relaxed mood. I am feeling amazing as ever. Um, I don't know if I, I don't know if I said it in the video I did in the last video that on Wednesday night I had, I think I might have, but I'll let you know again. Wednesday night, remember I've told you about place things before where I'd get up and go to bed and I'd start crying? Well, Wednesday night I was up getting my night medication and I um, started crying. And I thought, no, not again. So I just let myself have a good cry. Then I remembered what I had to do. So I, I stood up and I took three deep breaths. You know, took some deep breaths, stood up straight, and that feeling passed. And I was good. Actually, I think I did say in the last video, of course, I did have a bad night that night. Just weird dreams. I dreamt one of my teeth fell out. And because I've got dentures, I've dreamt one of them fell out. So I know that that is there's something in that I I will have to actually um, I might do that when I get to where I'm going I might Google and find out what because that does mean something I've had that same dream before and yeah it, it did mean something we are in a small town here um, I can't remember it's Fen Fen something. So these are nice country towns, a nice place to live, but it's out of town. Um, there's nothing really here. Um, and it gets a bit nippy in the winter. But we are in spring now, it's the 6th of September. And if for some strange reason my eldest niece happens to be watching, which I very doubt it, but I want to wish her a very happy birthday. 
She was born on this day in 1975, so that makes her 44. She's 44. Um, if you haven't been watching, and she, I was only 17 when she was born. She's her birthday is two days before mine, so mine's on Sunday. And I've got a little special course. Sunday is um, Sunday best. I have got. A, I'm doing. I am doing Sunday best. I haven't decided which baby I'm actually doing Sunday best, but it's not. I'm not going to video it at home. I'm going to video it when, wherever I'm out and out in wherever. I don't know where I'll be, but that is when I'm going to video my Sunday best. Somewhere nice and sunny. Um, I know on Sunday they have markets around Coffs Harbour. I might check and see if there's any other place besides Coffs. Um, I know Bellingen have a they have a market, but I'm not quite sure if it's this week. I think I'm a bit early for that. I think it's the end of the month. I'll have to check that. They might have a sign up. I cannot get over this. I know usually it's been ages since I've just got in the car and gone for a drive. Usually I'm going somewhere when I hire a car, but coming out hiring this car, and because I'm feeling good, you know, we are going. You are going to enjoy my trip. Um, Coffs, I'll do Coffs Harbour on. Don't know. I might do that on Sunday. Here we've we got here. Oh, we've got a cafe here. We've got a fruit store, fruit and veg store in there and we're heading up to Bello. Bello is what is around here we, we have um we, in Australia you know we we love to shorten our words short well my name's Cecilia I get called Seely or Seal or whatever and as you said Coffs Harbour gets we call it Coffs. Kingscliff is Kingy. Um, Pottsville is Potty. I was in Potty for 10 days um, I don't think I've done around there, have I? No. I didn't do potty. One day when I get up there. But as you know, we're coming into into Bello. For Bello is shortening for Bellingen. And the speed limit is 50k. But oh, when I got the car yesterday, the steering wheel was down. And I could not see the speedo to see how fast I was going. I had to just have to duck and... Before I turned off the highway onto Waterford Way, the head in here, I, I thought this is enough. So I had to pull, I pulled off the road. I had to pull it around. I couldn't find anything. So I checked and actually had the manual in the glove box. So I got it out and walked, went through it. I started from the back, which is really stupid because what I wanted was at, at the front. And I found it and I've lifted up the steering wheel and now I can see how fast I'm going or how fast I shouldn't be going. Um, we're heading into Bello, the sports field there. On our right, you'll probably see it on the way back. I might do one on the way back and see how I'm going. We've got a golf course on our right. This is a nice little country town. Um, I don't think it's changed in a long time. And I've got to watch my speed before the speed is 40 kilometers. As you know, I said before, we are in metric. And I don't know what, to, what 40 kilometers is in miles per hour. I think when I first got my license, we were, we were in miles per hour. But we are completely, Australia is completely in imperial measures where I know Americans it depends you know I was watching an episode of my favorite Martian the other week do you all remember my favorite Martian well on there it was in the schoolroom and they actually had metric things on the board they had a liter they had eight they had I don't know what they had, but they, it was they had metric measurements on the blackboard so it's really weird can someone tell me why you haven't gone completely metric? The hospital, no, this, sorry, this is Bellingen. 
Now, what's Bellington Hospital I went to? It was Bellington Hospital. Okay, now I'm telling the story. I forgot, I thought the story got. Okay, Bellington. Okay, my operation. The last I said was the guy I was sending over for the procedure. I had a curette. That was the 13th of October. A week later, on the 20th, I um, had my appointment to go and see him to get the results. And I sat down. The first thing he said, well, you got cancer and we don't know where it is. And of course, he was really blase about it. He thought, okay, she got cancer. We don't know where it is. I thought, what the hell is going on here? So when he got, he said, okay, because we don't know where it is, it could be the ovaries, whatever, we'll have to do a complete hysterectomy. Take everything out. I thought, that's okay. I don't need them. This was 2018. It's 10 years ago. I was in my 50, 50 something, 51, I think, 52. Yeah, it would have been 52. Well, no, it's 11 years, 51. You know, whatever. And I didn't need my ovaries, I didn't need my uterus, I didn't need my tubes, I didn't need anything. But one thing I'm wondering if they'll take the service because I didn't, they, they didn't know where it was. So, okay. Okay, I had me form to fill in for the hospital. Um, when I went, the, to, when I left the doc, the, when I left his office, the first person I messaged was Sarge. Um, I would talk about Sarge, but, and, and I told him that I had cancer and having a hysterectomy and the first word he said was F. I won't say the word but that is what he said and the reason why I told Sarge first was because I did fall yes I'm gay I have always known that for some reason men got in that's another another story but I did fall for Sarge he was this a most amazing man. He was, he has been the only person, only person in my whole life who has treated me with utmost respect. You know? And that is, and it's no wonder I fell for him. Um, he passed away about seven, eight years ago, I think it was. That was because of him that, um, we found the cancer, found the bleeding in that. I won't explain into that, but maybe you women, you know, something happened. I'm not, it, yeah, okay, I won't say. Um, but maybe another day. Um, and so, I, as I said, the gyno gave me the form to go fill out for the surgery. Um, he wanted for the hysterectomy. He wanted me to have within four weeks, filled the form out, took it to the hospital, and at the time I was friends with the, the, the person that my ex is living with, always had been living with, and she said, oh, you're going to be an it. I thought, what? Anyway, handed the form in, I went home, and I Googled, because the guy I gave me, the pathology results, so I went home, I googled the results and and the results said it was pertaining to my cervix so the cancer was in my cervix and it was early I, I think it was sin one I don't know what I can't remember what it was but it was early I can remember when I had to go for the pre-op at the hospital I finally got in um, I waited I kept ringing the hospital finding out I actually was volunteering at the hospital at the same at the time and I actually um, would go up to day surgery to find out when my operation is going to be I was hanging out for it um, finally one day they said first of December I said but the guy know he wanted to do it within four weeks he said is that okay you know is it because I was I didn't know how fast the cancer was going to spread and this was longer than six weeks that he wanted me to have it I said are you sure you know so she rang the doctor the gyno to check that it's okay and come back it was okay and oh my god I'm getting emotional um the nurse said she understood why I was worried 
um, because you never you can never tell how fast cancer how it could spread and but even though the gyna said it was okay I think I was a little bit worried but at least I had a date for the surgery um, when I had to go in for my pre-op I I asked them is he are they taking the cervix and the person didn't know you know okay so okay um, then I went and seen the surgeon myself, he explained everything and I asked him, can I keep my ovaries? And he looked at me. I thought, they were my ovaries. Huh? But I thought, I, it was later I thought, no, nah, they probably have to check them as well, just to make sure where the cancer was. And yes, I did take my cervix. That was on the 1st of December. Um, I think it was a week later. I had a point to see my gyno to get the results of the get, get the results and find out what happened and the result was that they got the cancer, it was all gone, it was still pertained in the cervix and they got it all. So I didn't need any um, any treatment for that, which I was glad. But the worst part was um, Women, any women out there who have had hysterectomy, it's no lifting, nothing for six weeks. And but where I was living, I had organised my furniture around so I didn't have to do any bending. And but the worst thing was that friend who my ex is living with. She lived, lived, lived um, she lived just a hop, skip, and a jump for me. She could have been there and two. She could have. She did not even think to come and see if I was okay, if I needed any help. Not once. But her fiancé did come over and she did not come over to see how I was. That is the kind of person she was. You know? She, because it was me that was had this and me who was not, I wasn't ill. She did not give a brass razor. She did not give a sugar about me. Um, everything has always got to be about her. Um, and it was hard being alone with no one. I mean, I had no one. I didn't have her as a friend. I had no one to see how I was. And it was hard. Her mum, I know before the surgery, before my hyster, dad said him and mum would come down for a few days afterwards. Okay, that was the last I heard of that. Okay. I'm not blaming mum. Dad, this was dad, dad said it. I didn't ask him to come down, but he did. He said it, he was coming down, but that's the last I heard of it. There was no more said. And, but that's dad. But you'd think that, um, any operation is serious. And pressure on your stomach, the hysterectomy, you know, I couldn't do it. I bet you mum, I think mum would have loved to have come down. But because she couldn't drive, you know, and they would have known, oh God. You know, it's, it's, it was, it was hard, but I got through it. Okay, my phone is collapsing. But I got through it. Um, I, I had pain medication to take, but I didn't need it. I didn't need any pain medic. Didn't need to take any pain. Um, for a couple of days after my hysterectomy, I stayed at friends at the time up in Whoopi. I'll head up there one day and show you Whoopi. And and when I got home, I was good, you know? I survived. I survived. I will survive, yes! Now, where are we heading to now? We are heading to Dorigo. I was going to stop, but I told you that. You know, I think um, I am feeling good. Even though I had a bit of a cry about things, I'm pretty sure... Um, whatever my father did, he did it. He knew what he was doing. 
forget maybe it, it was come from back him, but he was a hard man. He was like his um, his mum, his mother was a hard hard man, hard, hard, hard woman. But she was my nana, and I did love my nana. I don't know if I love mum and dad, but I know I lived with nana for about eighteen, nana and pop about eighteen months in my teens after I left school because I was working in Mwollomba and um, she would make my lunch to go to work and she would make me sandwiches, crunchy egg and lettuce sandwiches, crunchy egg and lettuce sandwiches you ask, yes there was some shell left in the sandwich but you know what Nana made that with love and she would put that many biscuits in, oh my goodness. I don't, she must have thought I was such a big eater. Yes, big girl, doesn't mean I'm a big eater. Um, and if I was late coming home from work, I was working late, I worked in a laundry. Um, and if I was late coming home, she would actually have my food on a plate, sitting on top of a saucepan of boiling water with a lid on it to keep it hot for me when I got home. That was Nana. I think she enjoyed having someone else to, to look after. Um, and she knew I was working and everything. But even back then, I think I had, I know I had issues. Um, they were there. I never had really, a, the longest job I've ever had in what I'm doing now, my volunteer work. That is the longest. That's, There'll be five years next month since I've been volunteering and it has been the best thing for me. I don't know where we are at the moment, but there's a asset fuel. Um, we are still on Waterford Way. Um, um, I remember years ago when I was driving taxis. Um, I was at the airport and I got uh, a fare to go to Dorigo, which we're, we're heading here, yeah, we're going to Dorigo. And it was a push bike, so it was a good fare. This was eight o'clock. And because they were working, they were, they were closing the road down of a night time to work on it. And they, they closed it at 10 p.m. of a night. And if I was, could not get back through here before 10 p.m., I would, was going to have to stay in Dorigo overnight, which would not be good because I had my putty tat at home I had, had to get back to. And yeah, but I made sure I got back. Um, this, is, this is a beautiful drive. It's a windy drive. There is a um, park up ahead on the right. Oh, we're 30 k, 13 k to Dorigo, so I might just keep filming to let you see the other, how beautiful this area is. It's 13 k to Dorigo, and I said I don't know what that in, in miles. Um, I'm just going to go. I must, might, I might just keep driving this way. Dorigo is... Oh, it's 20 past 10. I might stop to even get a cuppa or something. Or I got. I brought water with me. I brought some biscuits just in case I couldn't get anything gluten free. I'll have biscuits. Um, Dorigo is a nice town. I it, it been a, actually it's one place that I might go there first. Okay, we have got road works ahead as well. I smell something. Babies, did you dirty your nappy? Maybe it's coming in from outside. Um, there is a place I want to go. I might do that. Um, it's a beautiful place, beautiful scenery. Um, more roadworks. I, I don't know, I told you that. Oops, Daisy. 
Oh, excuse me. I used to drive a maxi taxi. A maxi taxi well, was a big one where I used to do wheelchairs. I'd sometimes have a maxi full. Um, I know one sad day, sometimes, especially there was a wedding on somewhere and they had to have all these taxis. And I took a load up and I come back. He said, the guy said, hurry up because we don't want to send this other taxi driver up. So I reckon I was a pretty good taxi driver. Um, the ones in the office, especially in the radio room, the head guy in the radio room, he knew what a person, kind of person I was and how I looked after my clients, my customers, and how I thoroughly enjoyed what I was doing. Yet you get those, some drivers out there. I think I was the only maxi driver, female maxi driver, and I thoroughly enjoyed what I was doing. Um, I looked after my, my, my customers, especially the wheelchair ones. I always looked after them, make sure they were comfortable. Um, I never took them on road, road races down the road. Oh, there was one time I picked up this nice guy out at a place called Sawtell. He was in a wheelchair, picked him up and was taking him back in the coughs into the nursing home. He'd gone home for the day to it. And he he told me, um, no, I want, that's something else. When we're going along, come along the highway, heading into Coffs past the airport, and I happened to look in the the mirror. Then I realised the back of the taxi was still up. I had driven, don't know how far I had driven, maybe for 10 minutes, and the back part of the taxi was still up. And I said, sugar. <laughs> She was wrong. I said, the back's for butt. So I had to pull over, pulled over, stopped the meter. She said, what happened? I said, the back door's still up. She said, I wonder why I felt a cool breeze come in through the back. So I pulled over, stopped the meter, went out and put the back down. And just as I got back in and taking off again, there was a cop coming the other way. I thought, wow, if that was, that would have been um, really... <laughs> if the cop had seen me with the back up but they, the people in the back customers they weren't worried because they know I look after them I made sure that the guy in the wheelchair was strapped down he could not move in there he had his seatbelt on he was secure and I okay we've got some I might have to stop we've got prepared to stop again I hope you're enjoying this drive um, I am so looking for, okay, yes, we have got the red light, so I might stop this now and start up again when I'm starting up, okay? Back in a tick. Okay, we're off again. That was ridiculous. A red light, oh, they're not doing any work. It looks like the road's falling away. I'm recording, yeah, I'm recording, I wasn't quite sure. I've turned the aircon off, I have put my window down, got some beautiful, it's beautiful out there, nice, just a touch of a warm breeze, it's not cold. Um, I think before we go into Dorigo itself, there is a place I want to go, I haven't been in a while, and I do want to show you that first. And, and the main reason, because I know there are toilets there. And that I need to do a pit stop. We have got falls here on the way back. I might see what. You get a good view up here, and where I'm going to show you this view, it is absolutely amazing. I know when I get in and stop the car, when I get there, I will actually stop, stop videoing. And wait till, till I'm walking out to where I'm going. And so you can see what's out there. It is absolutely beautiful. I said I haven't been up here for a while. Oh, the last time I was up here a few years ago when I was with, with a certain person. Um, I'm okay with going to certain places now that we had been together. Oh, there's one place I'm not quite sure if I will go again. I've been there once. I went there in um, May when I got through something over the over the creek. Through something. 
Oh my God, if only you could see, you will see this later. It is so beautiful. I love to see beautiful scenery. There's no, I know there's no scenery here. Just a bit of a rock, rock wall, really. And yeah. Sixty Ks. My ears are starting to pop. That's how how high we are. There's not that. There's no cars coming down. Everyone's heading up. Such a beautiful day. Oh my God! Look at that. Oh no, you can't see it. Oh sugar, I've got to watch the road. Could you watch the road for me and let me know where I'm going? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I haven't been. Oh, I'm enjoying this, you know, getting out. Um, I'm feeling good, feeling really good. And no matter how you are feeling, whether you are feeling down, feeling low, feeling you want to cry, feel like you're so alone in this world, you know what? that is okay no matter what okay we have got stopped again I'm going to stop feeling I might not come back this way I might come another way I'll stop the video okay guys just got a find out what's going on ahead um, there's about a K of traffic, a kilometre of traffic, and there is a car on fire. So we have got to wait for how long? I have no idea. So I'm going to turn the car off, brake on, that's it. And I can't go out and film the area because there's too many trees on the other side to do any film. I wonder how long it's going to be. Oh, hang on. Okay, guys. There has been a change of plans. I was looking for a good day out of Dorigo. <laughs> Showing my channel what, what I'm doing. I'm videoing my trip. <laughs> I've got a YouTube channel. Sorry, guys, I forgot. No. Oh, my God, didn't. There, half a rev. Sorry, guys. We we'll have to do this another day. Thanks, mate. Okay, guys. There goes that. The guy didn't know how long before we could go through. It could be an hour. It could be not. So I am just going to go somewhere else today. I don't know where. Um, I might stop down here. There's a park I said down here. I might stop down here so we can see what's going on down here. Um, no wonder there was another cars coming the other way. With the lights down here. They said there was about three or four fire trucks. I hear a siren. I don't know which way he's coming. Oh, he's coming towards me. So that's it. He's, they won't get anywhere. These cars are not going to get anywhere.
I know I need a pit stop. That's okay. I will go to Bello and I'll have a look down there. But as I said, there's a little park down there we pass on the way up. Um, when we get there, I will get out and I will show you. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. This is it. I don't know if you can see over there. I moved the camera around. Um, I can't do too much. Other cars turned around. I'm glad I've only got a tiny car and I'm a good driver. I, when I'm driving, I love to actually, um, I love getting into predicaments where I've got to get out of them. I know I can get out of them. I love having a t Go, go, mate. <laughs> Why don't they put a sign up saying that there's, um, it's, yep, here, this is where we're stopping. Yeah. We can't see much in here. They even haven't, haven't even got a loo here. I'll have to wait till I get to Yurunga. Not Yurunga. So I will take you out. I'll put you on my stick. I've got my little stick with me. So I'll stop you for a minute and we'll till I get over there. Well, hi everybody. Um, I'm stopped at the park and not sure how long this is going to be. It's quarter to 11. Um, it could be an hour or more, so I might have to work out this another day. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do. My head back down, head back through Bellow, stop in Bellow, have a look around. This view here is only a part we would have seen up on where I was going. And uh, I'm not dis I am a bit disappointed, but it's not just a car on fire. It's also part of the trees in that were on fire as well. So... There's probably about the first fire engine that went up there, fire engine went up there, ran out of water. Now there's two more gone up, so hopefully that, but the traffic is lined up. There's probably a K, 2K of traffic, which will take a while to get through. So I don't know what I'm going to do. Let me know what you want me to do. Okay, I don't know what. Oh, this is, I was going to go out on the skywalk, which taking you out over the Dorigo Plateau and it is you can see forever it's absolutely beautiful but I want to do it this weekend because if I don't do it this weekend it will be again so all this filming up here I don't know what I'm gonna do oh I'll go now and decide what I'm gonna do okay see you later okay okay guys I thought I see a little waterfall here uh, when we get a lot of heavy rain, this really comes down here. Comes where it comes down. Where is it? Can you see it? Yeah, that's there. It is nice here. It, it's going to be a warm day. Basically, as I think I said earlier, it's basically 32 degrees here today at Celsius. Remember, we're in metrics here in Aussie. The waterfall, you can hear it. Now that can be, that waterfall, when we got a lot of rain, that can actually be going over the road instead of going under. I might move around and see if I can get something else in here while I'm here. I'm barefoot as usual. Yeah. Oh, it is going to be a hot one. I should have my hat on. I can't see nothing much. Ouch. Darn rock, someone should blow them up. No, I can't see anything here. Well, there's no traffic coming back either, is there? You're probably stuck. Maybe <laughs> stuck on the other side as well. Yep. Both sides are blocked. That's why we got to the red light down here. We had to stop on the red light. Yeah. No one was coming through. I thought, not good slow day here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's right. Oh, he's turned around probably. Yeah. A lot of vegetation. I hate to see this go up. See if I can get closer to the waterfall. More cars. They should have a sign up down here. Oh, the guy's stopping them. No, he's not. 
They should have a sign up. Oh yeah, maybe they will. The moment all there is is just half a dozen bush fires or something. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Best to reach 32 today. It's hot enough now. The heat. Where are we? I've got a YouTube channel. Yes, I, I do. <laughs> yeah, and I actually, um, that's what I'm coming to today, do videos from your channel. Show me something around the area. Oh. I was going to go out in the skywalk, I thought, oh. Oh, <laughs> Probably we won't know when it's finished to go through. Okay guys, I'm still parked on the side of the road here and we just heard it could be hours before this road through to Dorigo is cleared. Um, there was a little four-wheel drive that's caught in the far middle of the road. There's been three fire trucks I've had earlier gone through. So I am heading back to Bello and just see what, because I really need a loo. Um, the lady here, she went in the side of the road down the hill because there's no toilets here. So I'm going to head back to Dorigo, sorry, to Bellingen and we'll see what, till I find a loo. I'll see when we get back there. I'll see what I'm going to do. Not quite sure. Okay. It is 11 o'clock here at the moment, about 11. So if I'm decided to go somewhere else, I will start up again. Okay, see you then. Bye.